So I clearly didn't learn anything from my July TBR. She might even make me love living where I do. I don't think I could live in a world where it was terrible. Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my August TBR. So I clearly didn't learn anything from my July TBR situation. Technically, there is less on my TBR in August, at least less number of books. But I think page count wise, it's um, about same, maybe worse. Anyway, August TBR. Don't need to explain that. Let's get right into it. First up I have Disintegration by J.E. Perazzi. This is the second book in the, is this trilogy called Malfunction? The first book is called Malfunction. Well, in any case, this uh, is an indie self-published book. I've actually spoken to the author a few times. Um, go so far as to say we are internet acquaintances. And I really enjoyed Malfunction. It has been a minute since I read it, but I think I remember enough to read Disintegration, which has been on my shelf for an embarrassing amount of time. And again, so have like most of the books on my shelf. So you're in good company. She finally released the third and final book. Um, it's called Connection. I have it, it's on the shelf over there. <laughs> if I'm wrong about that, I will inform you with text somewhere that I was wrong about that. I think it's called Connection. So she sent me the third and final book. Um, and so it's about time that I read the second one so that I can read the third one. And I'm actually really pumped about it. This is just like every other series on my list of series that I'm in the middle of, that just like, it keeps getting pushed back because other things come up. Anyway, so I'm prioritizing this gonna read it. And I've been reading slightly more sci-fi recently, so this seems like a good time for this anyway. Next up I have um, the next two, two slash kind of three, are basically like I want to read them in summer and August is like, even though I live in the land of eternal summer, August is the last official summertime month. The last mentally summer month. So uh, I'm like shoving them on my TBR despite the all of the overwhelming length and size of my TBR. Anyway, 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 anyway. So Fable by Adrian Young. Name, name, namesake, namesake. Either just came out or is about to come out, which is the second in this duology. And it's a really cool cover because namesake, um, if you put it next to Fable, it completes her face, which like that doesn't mean the book is good, but I think it's cool. When I first saw this cover and first heard Adrian Young was publishing this way back when, Adrian Young is the author of Sky in the Deep, if you don't know. This looked like Merida. <laughs> And I thought it would be like a Merida type thing. But then I started seeing fan art and like things from Adrienne Young on her Instagram that were like oceanic themed. I don't know why I said that, so weird. Sea type vibes. And I was like, the fuck? Um, and then I finally noticed there's like a teeny tiny little like ship in her eye. Like she's looking at it, I guess. And if you look at the back, there are indeed kind of like water droplets, like a, a wave splashing or something. Um, so I believe that this is a seafaring adventure, hence why I'm putting it on my August TBR because I feel like summertime, like official summertime, not every other month of the year, which feels like summer here, is a good time to be reading sea, seafaring, seaside, ocean-ish type of stuff. Hence why, well, that's for me why we read the live ship, uh, the, fuck, I, the ship of magic last month. And that's why I want to read Fable in August. So also, also, I can I didn't mean to talk about Fable for so long, but the naked book is really pretty. I'm assuming this gemstone means something. I'll let you know when I finish the book. So Fable by Adrienne Young. Next, just apply everything I said to Fable, almost everything I said about Fable, uh, to Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, aside from the Merida stuff um, and this kind of deep authorship. Anyway, this is by its title, by its cover, if you've heard of this at all, this is about surfers, I'm pretty sure. And just like with every other book that Taylor Jenkins Reid has written that I have read, I haven't read all her books, they're always about something that I would never pick up. I would never seek this out. If anyone else had written this, I'd be like, pass. But it's written by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I adored The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is about a Hollywood starlet, would never pick that up if it wasn't for all of booktube, everyone and their mother being like, this is the best book Loki ever. And same thing for after that, then okay, Daisy Jones and the Six, I was like, I wouldn't necessarily pick this up. It sounds slightly more up my alley than a Hollywood starlet. It's about a rock band. I was like, but you know, she can do her magic again. And she did. And I loved it. So I'm fully prepared to have Taylor Jenkins read make me love a book about surfers. <laughs> she might even make me love living where I do. <laughs> Unlikely. That's a tall order. <laughs> I'm like kind of dressed to match it unintentionally. Um, I will say, as much as I am averse to like purple and pink and that kind of thing, I'm obsessed with anything that looks like Rainbow Sherbert. <laughs> and this cover reminds me of Rainbow Sherbert. So 
I don't hate this cover. I'm not gonna lie. I do kind of hate the US cover, hence why I got the UK cover. Next up is the Raven King. This cover actually looks very wintry to me and I have no idea if this takes place in winter or not. So far, all of the Raven Cycle books have felt very summery to me. Watch, this will be so wintry that it's like not even funny. Anyway, I want to finish the Raven Cycle and it's not actually on my list of series to finish this year, but regardless, I want to finish the Raven Cycle and I'm so close and yeah. That's really why this is on here. Slash, I'm vibing it. Slash, it might be summary. I might be wrong, but I think it might be summary. <laughs> so, and it'll be a quick read, unlike some of the others on my list. So I want to knock this out so that I can finally start reading the new books that are like a spin-off series that I also have been collecting because of course I have. Anyway, yes, The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater, the fourth and final book in The Raven Cycle. After that, I would like, well, not after that, because these are not in the chronological order in which I will be reading them necessarily. But in any case, The Drawing of Three by Stephen King. This is the second book in the Dark Tower series. Um, Bethany and I read The Gunslinger in July and are now moving on forward with reading The Drawing of Three, which is considerably longer than The Gunslinger. You know, as these books always do, they just... It's, I compared The Gunslinger to The Last Wish in The Witcher books because it's like sh basically a collection of short stories introducing you to The Gunslinger. Basically, that's what The Last Wish is, is a series of short stories introducing you to The Witcher. And then you look at The Blood of Elves and The Drawing of Three, each like the beginning now, like properly the series. And they're like massively longer because of course they are. <laughs> I am excited about this. I did not hate the gunslinger. So the, everybody was telling me that I would definitely hate the gunslinger. You're wrong. And since that's supposed to be the worst one, I'm quite excited to be reading The Drawing of Three with Bethany. Next up I have this chunky monster, The Demon in White by Christopher Rocchio. This is the third, not final, but third book in the Sun Eater series that I have been buddy reading with Alex from Alex and Alex. I mean, even just like putting my hand around it right now is alarming. But each of these books keeps getting longer and longer and they was Empire of Silence wasn't short. <laughs> I should probably rearrange my stack here for a second. Cause we're also, oh, it's slipping. Oh God. We're also gonna read The Lesser Devil. Why is this slipping? Stop slipping. Which is a novella, which takes place kind of in between, I think the first and second books are kind of like in the midst of the first book. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're gonna squeeze this in so we can include it in our chat because this isn't like long enough to like have a whole separate chat about it. At least I don't think so. Maybe it'll be so intricate. Well, this cover is definitely the lesser <laughs> of all of the covers. But anyway, so yeah. So both of these um, will be read by myself and Alex Nieves and the chat now will be back to uh, being on my channel. So you have like a minute to catch up and read Empire of Silence, The Howling Dark, and now the demon in white. I catch up and come chat with us because the series, guys, the series, it is bananas, but it is so good. It is so good. It's top tier. Uh, favorite of the year for sure. So I'm super excited. I've heard this one gets even better, even crazier, even wilder, even more mind blowing. So I'm super ready for it. I know Alex is too. So read if you haven't, catch up and join us. Next, I have the two books that are next up on my Shakespeare project with me, my friend uh, Heather. Uh, we, if you missed it, we did our live talking about Macbeth and Macbeth and Hagseed and the Tempest. So we're going to go back to our original plan, which is to have a live show for each play slash retelling and not like combine it. That was because she was moving and schedules and whatever. So anyway, um, next up we have Othello and New Boy. Othello being the play by William Shakespeare and New Boy, the retelling of said play by Tracy Chevalier. Othello is my favorite, I would say favorite Shakespeare play, for sure my favorite tragedy and possibly my favorite of all of his plays. Definitely favorite tragedy. And the one that I'm most excited, I have been most excited for to read the Hogarth of. And also the most anxious about because like, this is the one like, if you fuck it up, I will be so mad. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know really anything about the retelling other than that it's part of this project. So I'm excited to read this with Heather and to discuss it with you guys. Uh, live show time, TBD. <laughs> Next up, I have The Forever King by Ben Galley or Gailey. I'm gonna say... Kiali? Um, this was actually sent to me by the author. I almost never accept books for review, like literally ever, like ever. However, I already own a book by Ben Galley. Uh, it's called The Written. I haven't read it yet. I don't know if I like it, but I was obviously interested in this author's work. So when he kindly reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in getting a copy of the first book in this series, because the second book in the series is coming out the beginning of August. So like right now, uh, would I be interested in getting a copy for review and mentioning it? And I was like, um, actually, like maybe you don't know this about me, but like, I never do this. 
I never say yes, but like actually, yes. <laughs> so he sent me a copy. This is also a long book, which surprised me a little bit because the written, which I already own, is like, is like half like less than half this length. <laughs> I believe this takes place in the same world as the written. Hopefully it won't be terribly spoilery for the written if I ever actually get around to reading it. <laughs> but in any event, um, yeah. So The Forever King, I have this now to read. And the second book in this series comes out like, I want to say August 3rd, but definitely like beginning of August. Um, so I'll have that link down below as well. So I'm excited for this. I'm loving all of the cover art of all of his books. Like, I'll be honest, that is what drew my attention to his books, but they also sounded up my alley. Next up, I have Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Yes, I have read this already, but uh, my patrons, I wanna say like they decided, but basically I like aggressively suggested and they acquiesced <laughs> uh, to the idea of reading some more Gaiman after we read Trigger Warning in last month in July. I was like, how about we read just like a bunch of Gaiman for all of our buddy reads? And they're like, maybe some Gaiman? <laughs> in August, at least we are reading more Gaiman and that is Neverwhere. Again, this is a reread for me. I think it's a reread for some of my patrons. This is not my favorite Neil Gaiman book. My favorite Neil Gaiman books are Ocean at the End of the Lane and The Graveyard Book. So if you're looking for Gaiman to read based on my recommendation, I recommend Gaiman because he's my favorite author. But among his works, among his many works, my favorites are Ocean at the End of the Lane and The Graveyard Book, so may as well start there. In any event, Neverwhere is the choice of my patrons. And Neverwhere has kind of an interesting history because it was not originally a novel. Neil Gaiman originally wrote this for television. It wasn't a novel that was adapted for television. This is actually a novel that was adapted from television. <laughs> So there's like, I know in one of my copies, there's an introduction from Neil Gaiman talking about how when they were making the show and they kept cutting things out of like the story he'd written for the show for like time purposes and exec purposes, he kept saying, well, it's okay, I'll put it back in the book. And he was driving everybody nuts that he kept doing that, but there he did. So I think there are multiple editions of Neverwhere. There was like the first one he put out and then like a couple other editions and then the author's preferred text, which is basically where he put everything back in. All of that to say, Neverwhere is what my patrons and I will be reading in August. Next up, I have second to last this is, so it's not too crazy and it's already crazy. I don't have a physical copy of it, but it's the Blades and Bodice Rivers Book Club pick and it is the Unbro Unbroken or The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This is Bethany's pick, so the live show for it will be on Bethany's channel where Blades and Bodice Rippers will gather to discuss. That, I've seen the physical book and I'm pretty sure it is it's really long. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is like, you know, like this type of long. So, yikes. <laughs> My stag is actually way taller than uh, it looked when I held it up. I've heard pretty good things about it. Actually, I've heard only excellent things about it, but I haven't heard a lot of things, if that makes sense. Like the reviews or the reactions that I've heard have been positive, but they have been few. So I don't know if it's a large enough sample size to be able to determine if this is like a hit, but it seems to have been a hit with those who have read it, which bodes well. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully liking one of the Blazing Rodness Rippers book club picks. <laughs> oh, but if not, you know, I will let you know exactly how I feel. So yeah, uh, join us in reading it and then in discussing it live on Bethany's channel. And last but most certainly not least is A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie. Also a reread because as you should know by now, I'm rereading all of the first law books in anticipation of the release of the third and final book in the Age of Madness trilogy, which comes out in September, which is The Wisdom of Crowds. So we are at A Little Hatred now. I'm so excited. I'm... Oh my god, Wisdom of Crowds is so close. It's so close. But now I'm I'm reaching that point where like I'm no longer eager for it. I'm mostly dreading it. Because one, what if it's terrible? I don't think I could live in a world where it was terrible. And two, that's it. I can't antsy pants about a new first law book anymore because there isn't I mean I have faith that he is going to write some more books in the world of the first law. He's indicated that he would be interested in doing so, but there is nothing announced or planned or slated, or scheduled. So once Wisdom of Crowns is out, in my hands, and is read by me, that's it. Then it's back to reading them all again, which of course I will do. But that is so sad to me. There are multiple shows where I have just like not watched the last season because I'm like, well, as long as I don't watch the last season, it's never over. I mean, I will read Wisdom of Crowds, but part of me is like, what if I know? And it's just like always there, always waiting for me, always another Abercrombie that I haven't read yet. Yeah, so A Little Hatred is actually on my TBR. I'm excited for this. This is this was my favorite Abercrombie book until Trouble with Peace dethroned it. 
The pressure is on Wisdom of Crowds to dethrone Trouble with Peace and become the best of all of them. It's a high bar, but I believe in you, Lord Grimdark. You can do it. Balls. That is actually not the last book. This is the problem with putting my Kindle in the stack as like the placeholder because I have two books that I'm reading on Kindle. Fuck my life. <laughs> so let's bring this bad boy back out again. Remember how I was gonna read Sword of Kaigen back when I was gonna read Sword of Kaigen? Well, I'm actually reading Sword of Kaigen in August because my patrons have chosen that as the book for me to read and review for them. So I can't shirk it. I can't like, I can't not do it. <laughs> so I'm finally, finally gonna read Sword of Kaigen in August as well. That's really and truly it for what I'm reading in August. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about what I've chosen, what has been chosen for me, what I will be reading, if you've read it before and can tell me your thoughts or if you're looking forward to reading it yourself. If it's any of the books that there will be some form of live show or discussion for, please join me in reading them so that you can join the discussion. It is always more fun if y'all have read it too. So that means you have your reading cut out for you as well. You need to be reading the Sun Eater series, you need to read the Blades and Bodice Reapers book club pick. You need to read Othello and New Boy. Um, I think that's it. So yeah, get to it. <laughs> anyway, let me know whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.